Hi everybody. In my last video, I painted the cab and put it on the chassis. Uh, got me thinking, a uh, little bit of work, and um, I could maybe drive this thing under its own power, uh, around the yard at least. Uh, I've, I've rebuilt the engine and the transmission quite a few years ago. Never had started them. Um, hope, hopefully it, it works. Uh, I do have to build uh, a ECU for the engine, uh, which I'm doing, and uh, I also have to put in a transmission controller, a used one that I had purchased, uh, hook it up. I have to also put up plumb the uh, lines for the transmission cooler and a bunch of other stuff. I have a big punch list. Uh, I'd like to get the whole cab complete, uh, interior, all the wiring, upholstery, uh, insulation, air conditioning, all that stuff before I get back on the body work. But uh, we're, like I said, we're going to start with the transmission today and uh, also I am building a mega squirt ECU for the engine. I have to build a harness for that. Uh, we'll probably get started on that as well. But uh, let's get rolling. I bought this transmission controller for the 4R70W Ford transmission off of eBay. I paid 200 bucks for it. Uh, I hope I didn't just throw $200 away, but um, it, it's an older version of this uh, US ship quick transmission controller. This is a quick one. They don't even make that anymore. Uh, so I'll see if it, hopefully it works. Uh, I probably need to, should strip these uh, looms off the wiring harnesses and make sure everything is intact. Uh, I'll just ohm test it first and see if it's okay. There's an access hole in the back of the cab uh, where the original fuel tank, uh, the line, uh, went through. And uh, I'm going to use that to route the wires for the ECU harness and for the transmission controller harness. And I plan to mount that stuff behind the driver's seat and make a uh, some kind of a plate or a box that that stuff could be mounted on and enough slack on the harness that I could uh, work on it easily. And I may even do the uh, main vehicle harness. Well, I learned a couple things about this transmission controller and how it relates to my transmission. I have a 1994 AODE that I converted and I didn't read this in the instructions before, but on a pre-1996 transmission, they used a low impedance um, torque converter solenoid and you if you use that it'll burn up the controller so I have to switch it to a high impedance uh, also the, the harness itself even though the connectors look similar um, the pinouts are different and uh, so it's not just plug and play with what I have here well, I told you it's been a while since I rebuilt this transmission evidently I did not fill the transmission I did fill the torque converter uh, so it was easy uh, taking that pan off. But here is the uh, torque converter solenoid. So I'm just going to change that, but back up and uh, take her off the lift. Well, I ended up just changing the pinouts on the uh, transmission controller harness that I bought from eBay uh, to make it work. And I left the harness long uh, on purpose. I'm not sure where I'm going to mount this in the cab yet. I don't know if it's going to be uh, behind the seats or under the dash um, and I'm as you can see I'm putting insulation in and uh, I put the wiper motor and the air conditioner unit in there and uh, I'm some doing all kinds of things at one time which I probably shouldn't be doing but that's what I'm doing and uh, got the shifter just sitting there it's not hooked up yet because I'm going to take it out to do the carpeting I put in new transmission cooler lines. Uh, they're braided, stainless, uh, Teflon coated inside. And uh, that's just going to the radiator. I don't have, I'm not gonna use at this time an auxiliary um, cooler. I think it'll probably be okay just like it is. I could always add that later. This is some of the stuff I purchased from Megasquirt from DIY Auto Tune. Um, 
It's a Mega Squirt 2 ECU kit. Uh, this is the uh, Mega Squirt stimulator board. It's it's actually just for diagnostics while you're building it. So you have to build this first, which I did. It's uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, this is some of the. This is the board, the main board for the Mega Squirt itself. So you get a, a whole bunch, all the components. All, they're all bagged and labeled. And uh, it's basic, you know, electronics assembly, uh, resistors, capacitors, and such. And, uh, you know, I have a little soldering station here that I use and uh, rotisserie for soldering this stuff. They're all through hole, uh, it's a through hole PCB. And uh, you put the components in, they're all labeled which component goes where. And then you flip it over, you, know, you can see like on here, you flip it over and do your soldering from the back side. It's uh, pretty straightforward. So when you're building this Mega Squirt ECU, you're following directions. Um, it's kind of like paint by numbers. The, the circuit board is uh, printed out uh, different components, like this one is U7. And, uh, you know, you follow the directions, put in, they, they bag all the components and labeled very well. Um, unfortunately, I did something, you know, in the paint by number world would be like making a pink ocean. I put uh, the wrong component in this slot here. Normally, that wouldn't be such a big deal, uh, like with a resistor or capacitor or two-legged um, component that's uh, flexible on the leads. You could desolder it with a, you, you could just basically uh, heat it up and, and pull the leg out and, uh, and reuse it. But uh, this component here, I, I put in the wrong place. It's supposed to be this one here. You can see it's got eight legs. And uh, it was in this slot here. Uh, you know, the trouble is you, you um, heat it up and I was using the braided copper uh, soldering wick, which is, pulls out the solder, but it wasn't enough. It was still captured, so you couldn't, sim or I couldn't simultaneously heat up all eight legs and pull out the component and save it. So I ended up uh, snipping off the, the legs, <laughs> mutilating it, and then pulling out each leg separately. I had to buy a new component, $1.62 for the component. Um, but uh, so now I gotta uh, go in and use a, they call a solder sucker and uh, um, clear each, each of the holes and then put the right component in and, and carry on. But anyhow, mistakes will be made. This is a solder sucker. It's just a <clears throat> spring-loaded vacuum pump. It's got a silicone tip on the end of it uh, and a plunger you push down that locks and then you um, what you do is like here where the um, solder is um, I, I refill these holes with fresh solder um, so I'll, I'll use a soldering iron get that uh, solder molten and quickly uh, with this with a solder sucker uh, cocked you uh, heat up the solder and put the silicone tip on it and pull the plunger and it uh, it's supposed to suck out the solder in theory. Let's see how it works. Here's three of them that I've uh, cleaned out. I've got five more to go, but uh, that's, this is a through hole uh, printed circuit board. So this will let me put a new component in. This is how uh, I install a typical uh, connect um, component. This is, happens to be a small resistor. I use a, a, a tool that's meant for bending the leads on the resistors, but you could just use needle nose pliers or your fingers for that matter, just to get the right spacing uh, on this through hole printed circuit board. Um, just bend it over like a U shape and feed it through the holes. Pretty simple. And then on the back side, I pinch the 
leads together to keep it from falling out when I flip the uh, board over to do the soldering. Um, I'm going to go ahead and populate a few other spaces with components before I flip it over to solder. I'll bring you back in a minute. All right, I have to uh, solder. Uh, I've got six of them of these resistors in, three here and three here. Uh, these three, there's some jumper wires on the back side that'll be in the way for me soldering. So I'll solder these from the front, or from the top rather. Uh, same procedure. Um, I apply the heat with the soldering iron on one side, uh, touching the lead and also the little ring that you see on the uh, circuit board uh, to heat it up enough and then I apply the solder from the other side and it wicks right in there and that component is soldered on that leg. Very simple. Like I say, when you heat, um, heat it up from one side, feed it from the other, uh, it assures that you uh, get the solder, uh, everything, all the components uh, heated up enough for the solder to adhere. That's all it is. And this is a 60-40 uh, Rawson core, <coughs> core solder. Uh, so it's got the flux built into it. Here's the other side and you can see That it's um, gone through made a nice little cone on the back and I'll cut those off. Here's how you can solder uh, the component from the back side Same same thing Sometimes it's easier to do from the back less stuff in the way and that's that's that. And then uh, just use some small dikes and flip the leads off. Get the idea. Well, I've got my ECU all assembled. Uh, everything went well. I've got uh, all the components in, mounted into the housing, and uh, I've got it hooked up to the engine simulator. I've got the Megasquirt uh, Tuner Studio installed on my laptop. So with the um, simulator, I could you know, do a virtual run on it. Uh, there's engine RPM, uh, throttle position, all the uh, intake air temperature is working, air fuel ratio for the O2 sensor, that, that works. Uh, so all the inputs are working and uh, everything seems good. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Um, I, pretty happy with the results. They say in the uh, brochure that 8 to 12 hour assembly time for somebody with average uh, skills. Um, I think that's a little optimistic. There's a gazillion or more pieces in here and uh, you got to make a lot of choices. Uh, you know, there's a lot of optional ways to set this up different for different uh, components like your uh, idle air valve. Next video I will be making the engine harness to hook this up and we'll get closer to starting this motor up. But uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.